Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Pierre Fall International Sports Complex for this game between the Penguins and the Red Wings. I'm Jared Lacker-Minkoff alongside Connor Comalty, and we are underway as the Penguins will get it off the draw. It's Noe Vaisal into the Red Wing zone. He'll go back behind the net with it now. Vaisal, bothered there by number 31 of the Red Wings. Apologies once again, we don't have everybody's name on the roster. So we don't have a player's name, we'll just refer to them by their number, but we'll do our best to get as many names as we can. So here are the Penguins behind the Red Wings net, but the puck will come all the way back to the Penguins goaltender, Marcel Cowan. Or excuse me, that's Lorenzo Shabin. And here comes Hugo Limelay for the Penguins. He's got that great stride through center ice. Limelay in over the Red Wings line. We'll go wide with it now, and he lost the puck. And the Red Wings' Stone McGregor sends it back up. And it comes back now. Number 11 for the Penguins. We don't have his name, unfortunately. But he's got the puck now. Hugo Lemelang just loses it. And he'll try to send it up the boards. Closed off there, but now here comes Felisakis, the star scorer for the Penguins. Yannick Felisakis over the line. Cuts inside with it now. Tries a backhand pass, and that one couldn't work. And here comes Felipe Miguel Miro for the Red Wings. It's a 2 on 0 here. Miro the pass across. The shot coming there from Kadeem Hart Collymore, and he didn't get good enough wood on that. Great chance for the Red Wings, though, as here come the Penguins the other way. It's number 20 with it. His backhand shot goes into the boards hard. Here's to get up. He's okay, but now a shot coming from Felisakis. That goes off a stick and out of play. Yeah, so we got to see some really good pace early on here. By, uh, by both these teams. The Red Wings, they like to utilize their speed a lot and try and cut to the center of the ice and put a lot of pucks on goal that way. Penguins play a similar pace. You have a lot of guys like Yannick, Yannick Felisakis, as we pointed out, one of the top draft picks in the draft year for the Penguins, as well as Benjamin Carreno, who can really wheel them and deal them in, in tight on inside the goal areas here. So we're going to see maybe a high scoring affair, but also we have two stellar goaltenders in Shaman and uh, Madden on the other side for the Red Wings, who are really good at tracking the puck and taking away opportunities and uh, space is in that. And a correction, number 11 on the Penguins is Edouard Moret. So my apologies for that. And we'll redo the faceoff to the left here of Devin Madden. A bit too overzealous, it feels like right now by the Penguins. Trying to just win the faceoff draw is the most important thing here. Control the puck, and that's how you get more of an offensive prowess against them. There's Carreno in the corner. Working against two Red Wings, and he lost the puck there. And now here comes Christopher Collin, the captain. He gets it up ahead for Dumont Vio of the Red Wings. Vio on the right side, passes it back. Colin just out of his reach there. That was a good chance. And now Carreno will start back for the Penguins. Leaves it behind for Benjamin Wong. Now the Red Wings will start back up with it. That's Felix Latsuli carrying it now for the Red Wings. And over the Penguins line, and he'll go deep with it. Tries to center it, but he fanned on that pass. He gets it back, though. In the corner now, it's Dumont Vio for the Red Wings. Tries to send it back, but nobody home for the Red Wings, and here comes Benjamin Wong. Starts up, perhaps a four on two here for the Penguins as Wong works his way in, but that's gonna be an offside on number 20 in the Penguins. Number 20 in the Penguins left us one day. Uh, he was here for the first start of the tournament the first day, but I caught talking to Coach Wong, who is not on the, uh, the visitor's bench today, unfortunately, or for the period, or uh, for this period of time, indicated that he would be missing a day of action. That was yesterday. I believe his last name is Williams, if I'm not mistaken, but I need to make a correction before I do that. So for now, we're going to be referring to him as number 20. Apologies to the family of number 20 on the Penguins. An excellent player, a lot of really good prowess as we actually get to see two juggernauts right here, Lemelin and uh, Morin, battling for it. Morin, again, and Lemelin. And it's the Penguins who will come up with it. It's Edouard Morin. Morin. Into the Red Wing zone, on his own for now. Going wide on number 31, Moret, around the net. Tries to send it back to the point, and it's intercepted there by Vaugrel, who sends it up for Miron. Miron, in for the Red Wings, a back pass. Auger takes the shot. That one's blocked by Lemelin, and it goes into the corner. Lemelin, not a lot of space to work with here, but he'll get it up for Felisakis. Felisakis in his own corner, dances around Miron, and he's got some space to move now. Felisakis through center. Four Red Wings are back. Felisakis tries a toe drag. Number 31 of the Red Wings there was able to poke check that. And now here comes Miro for the Red Wings. Miro in on the right side. Goes wide on Lemelin. Miro wrap around there, but Morin was able to close him off. And the Penguins will get the puck back. That's Sean Wang up through center. 
Wang having some trouble handling that one, but he's able to corral it. And now gets it to Baskakov. Great move inside. But poke checked again by number 31. He's had a good stick defensively so far. He's got it back now. Tries to pass it back for Miron. And it'll go to the boards. Miron. Bonded there by Baskakov. And now it's Anthony Vogrel who will take over for the Red Wings. But he's bothered by number 12. Penguins forecheck. Running circles around the Red Wings so far here. As now here's number 20 with it for the Penguins. Chips it out to center. It's taken there by Vaisson. And it'll come back to Vogrel. Vogrel across for Dumont Vio. He loses it to number 12. But 31 takes it back to the Red Wings again. Vogrel back pass behind him. And it comes just outside the Penguins line. Here's Ben Carreno for the Penguins. In over the Red Wings line. Carreno slows down. Turns back and he'll send it down for number 12. And 12 is bothered there by number 31 who takes the puck away. He's been on the ice a long time. And the puck will come back to number 20. Great move to the inside. Now here's Vaisal. He'll take the shot. Devin Madden had some trouble with that, but he'll cover up. Finally, Devin Madden getting tested a little bit here because there's a really good presence of mind here by the Penguins in the offensive zone. But it looks like Madden's striking the puck, but hasn't had a lot of shots on goal so far. So he's got to be making sure that he doesn't build up any rust on those legs. He's still good post to post and tracking the puck, which he's a very excellent at, as I pointed out already. His vision is top notch in this tournament. He likes to, he can, he can battle with you even if there's traffic in front of the net. He knows where to track the puck. Lots of great goaltending that we've seen in this tournament as the Penguins win that draw. Number nine has it now. He'll get it down for Felisakis. The pass in front deflected. And that one stayed out somehow. As it was Benjamin Wong, he turns and fires. And that one just missed. Felisakis has it back now. In the corner with it. Felisakis. Poke check there. By number 23, that's Antoine Boisvert for the Red Wings. And now it's the captain, Christopher Collin, who works it out. Zimon Vio trying to get it back and does. Potential two on one. Zimon Vio takes the shot. That one goes off Lorenzo Shaman and out of play. This is a really good top line here by the Red Wings. When you look at Colin Dumont Vio, who is deceptively, he looks smaller, but he's deceptively quick. And his set of hands is probably some of the best that you're going to see in this tournament. And then complimented by Kadeem Hart Collymore, who was sensational during the summer tournament and almost took, I believe he took home MVP honors at the end as the finalist MVP because he was just sensational in that game. This is actually a rematch of the championship game during the summer tournament when the Penguins lost a heartbreaker, a comeback win where the Red Wings did pull it off. So really good rivalry matchup right here. Here's number 12 for the Penguins. Works in, shoots, and that one goes over the net. Zimo Vio trying to tip it out and does, and now a race for it. But Hugo Limelay of the Penguins will get there first. Back in center now, it's Sean Wang with it for the Penguins. Wang has basket caught to his left, keeps it, takes the shot. That one goes off the stick of Boisvert and into the corner. Number 12 with it for the Red Wings. That's Kadeem hart Collymore who dumps it down. And Hugo Limelay will take it back. Tried the pass for Barre, but that one missed. And here comes 21 for the Red Wings. That's Latsilip, Felix Latsilip. Here's Hugo Limelay working his way through center. Limelay in over the Red Wings line. He'll shoot. That went off a defender and wide, but he gets it back. His shot sails wide of the mark and out of play. Yeah, Hugo Limelay, who's one of the better puck playing defenseman in this tournament. He's ever patient. He doesn't need to utilize a lot of speed because he's just patient and knows where to put the puck. It's hard to get off, get it off of him. And he's also just got that a complimentary elite shot. Just doesn't place it there. A bit too under that one. Maybe a bit too over anxious early on in the first period here. Trying to get the puck on goal. But trying to get those high corner shots are going to be advantageous uh, here against a goaltender like Madden. Tie up off the draw, but the puck goes to the Penguins, and it'll eventually slide down to Devin Madden. We'll have a face-off. Yeah, Devin Madden likes to play very like uh, care uh, stress-free in his net, and that means if a puck is trickling around him and he's got any degree of traffic, he will cover it up. He likes to play more conservative in that sense. We don't often see him play the puck as uh, some other goalies who like that more back-and-forth action. Puck deep in the Penguins zone now. Number 20 going after it, and that's going to be an icing call against the Red Wings, so we'll do it all over again. Yeah, the Red Wings trying to utilize their speed and sort of like stretch the ice here, play 200-foot hockey, but you need to focus, focus on getting the puck out of this zone first. You're in your own end here. Try and see if you can start something off the breakout instead of just relying on a stretch pass. See if you can string together a couple passes here, go through the middle of the ice, and then utilize your speed. It's a speed versus speed matchup today between the Red Wings and Penguins, so you're going to see a lot of really fast-paced hockey. Penguins win that offensive zone draw. Here's number nine. Number nine on the boards. He's bothered there by Stone McGregor. And the Red Wings will get it. It's Vogrel trying to clear the zone. Cross checks Vaisal. No arm goes up from the official. Back at center ice now, just outside the Red Wings zone. 
It's taken by Vogrell. He loses it to Felisakis, who gets it ahead for Ben Carreno. Carreno in over the line, takes the shot. Madden had a bit of trouble with that one, but it does go off his glove and wide. And now Auger will try and clear for the Red Wings. Can't do it, is kept in by number 20. Around the net now, Ben Carreno will get there first to the Penguins. Carreno lost the handle. Two Red Wings on him, but he gets it to the slot. Here's Vaisal. A good defensive play there by number 31. Number 20 takes the shot for the Penguins. And that one was blocked in front by Stone McGregor. Shaking his hand a bit after that one. But McGregor will go after in the corner. Carreno gets to the puck first. Ben Carreno now. Here comes Miro for the Red Wings. Nice pinch by number 20 at the line to keep that puck in. Penguins have spent a long time in the Red Wings zone here. But still no real chances on net. Here's Felisakis. But he loses the puck to Vogrell. And Vogrell will start out with it for the Red Wings. Over the red line. Passes off for Miron. Miron back to Vogrell. Nice passing play. Couldn't quite get a handle on that one. His number 20 for the Penguins takes him down. 20 will send it up ahead for Benjamin Wong. Wong skates past Auger. Into the offensive zone. Wong trying to cut right to the net. But he didn't quite have the angle. And Devin Madden will put a stop to that. As you just said, Wong didn't have the angle there to try and pull it back to the forehand. He's a good right, right shot uh, playing uh, forward here. Got a lot of speed at the center position. Everyone on this lineup, as we pointed out, has really good speed. But Madden really good at taking away the angles here and plays the puck perfectly. A really good textbook goaltender here. Latsulip trying to chip that puck out, but Lemle was able to keep it in. The battle for it on the boards now. It's chipped down by Benjamin Wong, who was just stopped by Devin Madden. Wong again chips it deep, and Antoine Boisvert is after it for the Red Wings. It came right in front of their net. They were able to clear the zone there. And Christopher Collin will send it out. Here's Alexis Dumont Vio in alone, but Shaman comes out to play that one away as the puck slipped a little bit too far ahead of Dumont Vio. And now Felix Latsulip pickpocketed there by Wong, but Christopher Collin gets it back for the Red Wings. Wong well, sends it ahead, intercepted there by Lemelin. Battle on the left side here at center ice. Lemelin taken down, and the Penguins will come back three on one. Here's Benjamin Wong off for number 12. He'll take the shot. That goes off Boisvert and wide. It's Isaiah Oxford, or excuse me, that's Felisakis for the Penguins. In his own end now, it's Felix Latsulip who will take control. And he tries to get it out. Lemelin keeps it in once again. A long shot off the blocker of Devin Madden and out of play. Yeah, whenever Lemelin has the puck on his stick in the offensive zone, you got to watch out as a goaltender and be ever prepared because he'll shoot from anywhere, as you just saw. And that was an elite shot placement, too. It wasn't It wasn't anything that was too easy to handle there for Madden, but he does just steer it away. He makes it look easy, however. But yeah, Devin Madden being really sharp right now. There's only a minute left in this first period, as you pointed out, Jared. Penguins looking really hungry to try and open the marking here. Penguins have had the majority of the shots. We've still got a 0-0 game as Devin Madden's been sharp and goal. A giveaway here. Sean Wang couldn't corral that. Now a three-on-two developing here for the Red Wings. It's Anthony Vogrell into the offensive zone. Vogrell fans on the shot. That one rolls to the wide of the net. And he's got it now. Pickpocketed there by number 20. And he's got some space. He'll send it out to the right side for Sean Wang. Wang sends it back. No teammate there, but number nine is there to cover that up. And now it's pickpocketed by Mihal. Backhand shot. Stopped by Shaman. Vogrell, nice move, turns and fires, and he just missed to the right of the net. And that puck will come out. Number 31 will dump it in, but it's a delayed offside on the Red Wings, which we'll have to tag up. And now here's number 20 for the Penguins, under 20 seconds to go in this first period. Gaining speed through the neutral zone and into the offensive zone. Number 20 trying to go around the net and does. Final 10 seconds of the period now. He'll send it back down for Baskakov. Baskakov hasn't said his name much in this first period, but you know he's an offensive weapon. Number 31 takes it back, and that will end this first period. A 0-0 tie. Devin Madden, very sharp in goal for the Red Wings. Yeah, that's like you pointed out there, Jared. Devin Madden has been keeping his team in this one. He hasn't made, had to make too many tough saves, but he's been making really good saves. Because here's a little tidbit to all those who might be watching at home who are aspiring goaltenders. Watch how these two play the puck. You have a bit more cautious on the other side. If Shaman likes to play the puck, comes out of his net, versus you have Madden, who's a bit more of a conservative, a more, a more safe playing goaltender, but he's a textbook goaltender at the same time. He makes it look e easy because he has all the nuances and the small details that he practices. It's 
all about the fundamentals in, in a lot of sports like that, and that's where you get your success. That's why Madden is keeping his team in it and has kept his team in it in many instances during this tournament. We saw the matchup this morning against the Bruins where the Bruins did win that one, but it was a slew of shots that was incredibly lopsided offensively. The Bruins were dominating in that game, and yet it only ended, I believe, 3-1 to one or 4-1 to one, if I'm not mistaken. So Madden being able to really be sharp throughout this tournament is what the Red Wings are going to be needing here because they need to utilize their speed, build the circulation, get the puck moving a bit more in the offensive zone, and they will be, d be dangerous for the Penguins. Keep what you're doing. Keep your foot on the gas. At any level of hockey, a goaltender can make such a big difference. This tournament is no exception. As the second period's underway here, Isaiah Oxford for the Penguins gets it across to Carreno. Nice spin move to create space, and the shot is an easy stop for Devin Madden. Yeah, again, just another. I, I want to check it. if we can get the statistics for the shot count against Devin Madden. I'm not going to be surprised if he has a plus, like uh, over a 950 goal uh, save percentage. His goals against average is something I'm not going to be like paying attention to because he plays a lot of minutes, and there is going to be high goal amounts in this tournament, as we can see easily. See another textbook okay. save, just swallows that one up so quickly. He's good. He's so good at pouncing on these rebounds. There's a lot of rebounds that kind of bounce off the pad and they don't go your way but the way that he sprawls after them, he really does cover them up. Rebound control is so important to prevent those second and third chances as we see often in this tournament resulting in goals. Face off to the right of Devin Madden. Wong gets it off the tie-up. And it's taken back by that's unique. He'll try and chip it out. But it's sent back down behind the Red Wings net. A bit of a miscommunication there. Boisvert almost pocket picked by Oxford. But now here come the Red Wings. It's Hart Collymore who sends it ahead. And Latsunik will have to take it back at center ice. Noe Vincent now for the Penguins, trying to send it ahead for Carreno. He's got a bit of space here. Oxford trying to join the rush. Carreno in, takes the shot. Blocker saved by Madden. Rebound comes back out. And now the Red Wings will take it back. Here's Kadeem hart Collymore for the Red Wings. Potential three on two here. hart Collymore falls down inside the Penguins' blue line, but the puck still loose. Now a shot coming there. That was Alexis Dumont Vio, and that one just went wide. And now here comes Isaiah Oxford for the Penguins on the right side. In on Boisvert. Oxford stops up. Lost his balance a bit. Lost control of the puck. And now Hugo Lemelin will settle it down. Lemelin behind the Red Wings. And that pass out in front. That went off the pad of Madden, I believe. And now Latsunip sends it ahead. Here's Hart Collymore for the Red Wings. Kadeem Hart Collymore. And over the blue line. Passes back. Dumont Vio. He'll take the shot. That one just goes wide. Shaman wrap around try here, and they score. It's Kadeem Hart Collymore pouncing on the rebound, and the Red Wings have the lead early in the second period. There's really great puck control and awareness here by Hart Collymore. You have Dumont Vio who has a really elite shot. He just misses the net. It sort of bounces behind, and Hart Collymore wraps it around by almost going like completely 90 degrees with his stick. His stick was completely parallel to his body almost as he tucks that one in. Unfortunately, Shaman just couldn't get the toe across and cover up the net. So a great way to opening this, open the scoring and swing the momentum a bit here. The Red Wings definitely needed that. Hart Collymore was the lone goal scorer for the Red Wings in their 4-1 loss to the Bruins earlier today. Continues his hot streak there. As here comes Anthony Gogrell for the Red Wings, dumping it deep. And number 12 for the Penguins will go after it. 12 looking for some space. The Red Wings are a bit spread out here. He'll send it ahead for Felisakis. We know he can shoot it. Felisakis in on the D. Splits the D and goes right to the net. But Madden steers that aside. And now the Red Wings could have a break here. It's number 24, Felix Miguel Miro. Miro shoots, that one goes just wide. Excuse me, it's Felipe Miguel. Alex Auger back for Miro. Miro takes the shot, that one's blocked by number 20. And Felisakis will take it back for the Penguins. Back behind the net is number 12. Looking to start the breakout. He's bothered there by Miro. Number 12 out for Felisakis. He's got Baskakov breaking, but he keeps it himself. Felisakis, great move to the inside, but he's stopped there by Stone McGregor. And Vogrell sends it back out to center. Marin leaves it there for number 12. Puts it off the boards. Baskakov, he's able to get past number 31. Baskakov is into the Red Wings zone now. In on Miro, centering pass. That one goes off McGregor and right to Madden who will cover it up. Well, Madden just tracking that puck really well. Easily going to cover it up now. Now the Penguins sort of coming alive again. Now in the in that roughly three minutes is, is gone down here in the second period. At the start of it, it kind of like switched sides and we had that really amped up energy here by the Red Wings. Ryan Liverman, the coach for the Red Wings really good at getting his team motivated to start here. The Penguins have come alive again. They had a really good advantage here at the start. They looked to be all, it looked to be them to be the stronger team at the beginning. See if they can utilize that uh, wake up call of being down a goal now. Stone McGregor sends that one out for Miron. Felipe Miguel Miron. In on goal to the backhand. He had an open cage, but he couldn't quite tuck it home as he lost balance and lost control of the puck. Penguins get lucky there as Hugo Lemelin 
will start the breakout again. Lim Le in over the Red Wings line. Has some space now, Lim Le. Trying to cut to the net, he didn't quite have an angle, so he'll go back behind. Lim Le stops, reverses the steps. The right faceoff dot, tries to pass it to the point. That goes off Miro, he's going after it now with number nine for the Penguins, and he gets around him. Here's Miro, takes the shot, scores! Felipe Miguel Miro, like a Jaguar coming down the right side and beats Shaman and it's two nothing Red Wings. Yeah, uh, unfortunately Lorenzo Shaman, I think he was he was anticipating rather rather than reacting on that one as a goaltender. He was he assumed that he was going to go cross crease to Alex Auger right there, but Miro, really good idea to just snap that one home on the defender. Went glove side right there. I'm sure that's one that Lorenzo would like to have back. Two nothing here, or excuse me, one to one, uh, two nothing here. I am correct. The Red Wings do take advantage right now, but a two goal lead is nothing that is secure in this hockey game, especially in this tournament. Yannick Felisakis for the Penguins. They're going to need him to get going if they want to come back in this one. And for number 20, they'll send it across to Isaiah Oxford. He's on his own for the moment. Oxford in on Poivre. He got around him, but the puck was sent a little too far. Felisakis gets it back. Felisakis in on goal. The centering pass is looking there for Oxford. Who that pass was been out of his reach. Here come the Red Wings back the other way now. It's Christopher Collin. He centers it for Dumont Vio. And stopped there by Noé Vincent. Sends it out for Isaiah Oxford. Felix Latsunip will recuperate there for the Red Wings. Sends it ahead. Just out of the reach of Christopher Collin, but he's going after it now. The number 12 from the Penguins beats him to it. Nice move to create some space. And he'll skate out to center. Passes now to number 20. Number 20 and on the left side. Nice toe drag around Latsunip, but he lost the handle after that. Christopher Collin chips it out. Noé Vincent is back for the Penguins. Vincent has no teammates open right now. Bumped there by Dumont Vio, but he was able to keep control of the puck. And now here come the Penguins. It's a three on two. It's Oxford across. Felisakis is just out of his reach, and it goes to the corner. Felisakis trying to go around the net. Sharp angle shot. Devin Madden doesn't quite know where it is, but he's got it, and we'll get a face off. Okay, so an interesting idea here by Felisakis to try and get the sharp angle shot and see if maybe Madden isn't paying attention too much there, but a bit more of a selfish play in that decision. I would would have liked him to see if he could pass it out. We've seen that a lot by the Penguins. It seems to be like a one-man team when they circle in front of the net rather than trying to get set it up in the slot. You have time here. You're a good offensive team. You have so many weapons. Try and see if you can circle a circle late. It's not always the first shot that's the best shot. The one that you can set up and be prepared and maybe get a rebound for, those are the ones that are more ideal. Here come the Red Wings. They had a breaking Auger, but it's Miro who will hang on to it himself. Miro right to the net. Almost had his second straight goal there, but Shaman stayed with him. Miro's got it back now. In the slot, cuts inside, and he'll pass it back to the point for number 31. He takes a shot, tip scores! I believe that went off the stick of Nikolai Baskakov and the Penguins. And it's a goal for number 31. It's three to nothing. Yeah, just like that. I believe Nikolai Baskakov would have liked to have lowered his stick on that one instead of putting it high in the air as it did deflect off of him and just over the blocker side here of Shaman. So the Red Wings are taking a 3-0 lead, which is really unfortunate given the fact that the Penguins have been such a really good offense, very potent. Again, I think it's just one goal would get them back and it'll re-energize re them a little bit. But right now, the Red Wings looking like the better team. It's a perfect deflection for Baskakov if he was on the Red Wings. But uh, yeah, like you said, unfortunate there. Here's Hugo Lemelin. Trying to get something back for the Penguins here. Ahead for Carreno. Three on two for the Penguins. Carreno went over the line. A shot. And another easy save for Devin Madden. And he'll start the breakout back now for the Red Wings. It's a three on two. It's Miro. And on the right side, shoots. And Lorenzo Shaman will hold on to that one. So Lorenzo Shaman, I think, I think one of the things that was sort of the crux against him was the fact that he didn't get a lot of shots for a period of time after like the first five minutes in the first period. And because of that, the rush sort of maybe built up a little bit. And that's why you had a couple mistake goals that he wished he could have had back. But now he looks really poised in his net. He looks more comfortable. He's tracking the puck just as well he was before. He's, re he's reacting versus anticipating, which is really sound goaltending fundamentals that we're seeing by Shaman now. Zimo Vio will try to send it in there. A shot by Boisvert. That one goes just wide. Zimo Vio's got it back. A nice move to the inside of number 20. Zimo Vio trying to hang on, but he's pickpocketed there by Sean Wang. They'll go back down. Christopher Collin sends it across for Hart Collymore. Collin now back for Hart Collymore. They'll send it back down for Collin. Christopher Collin around the net. Tries to pass it out front, but no Red Wing was there to finish that off. And Benjamin Wong will take it back for the Penguins. Wong starts up ice. Passes it across for Sean Wang. Wang into the Red Wing zone, watched closely there by Latsunip, and he got around him. The pass right in front, number 12 a shot, a rebound, the puck's right there. Madden made a couple of saves, but it squirted loose behind his net. 
No harm, no foul for the Red Wings. As soon as they come back, it's Dumont Vio trying to get around the melee and does. Dumont Vio will try and cut right to the net. A shot. Shaman the save, the rebound by Colin. And somehow Lorenzo Shaman stands tall and keeps that one out. Yeah, stands tall, but I will say from the butterfly position, hard to stand up. But still, I get what you mean, Jared. Very good observation there. Yes, does make the toe save and just sort of hugs the post with it because his body's going the other direction. He's been jostled off of it. So really sound play by the defender to try and see if he can just cover it up afterwards. Referee a bit quick on calling the whistle. It did look a bit a bit loose, but hey, there's only two refs in this tournament. If you lose sight of the puck, you have to call, especially in front of the net. It could be a safety issue if you don't. The Red Wings win that offensive zone draw. Antoine Poivre shot. Christopher Collin tried the tip there, but he just missed. Isaiah Oxford for the Penguins trying to get it out and does. It's Ben Carreno. He'll send it ahead for Felisakis. Felisakis coming in on goal. Trying to pass across, but Carreno hadn't quite caught up to the puck yet. And now here's Felisakis again behind the Red Wings net. Yannick Felisakis, such a prolific scorer. Takes the shot, and Madden will grab that one. Yeah, Devin Madden now, he's getting more energy and some more shots against him now uh, compared to like at the start of the period. It feels like Devin Madden is somebody who really sets the tone for this Red Wings team because once his starlet goaltender, the stellar goaltending, excuse me, uh, starts up here and he's able to put himself in the right position and makes all these textbook saves, it just takes one goal for the Red Wings to really get in this one. So Devin Madden is definitely the backbone of this Felisakis, team. Felisakis, a back pass there, looking for Carreno. Couldn't finish that one. Perhaps Felisakis thinking a bit too much. But now here come the Red Wings, it's Felix Latsulip. And on the right side, pass number nine, Latsunip. Stops up there and sends it behind the Penguins net. Lim Lang going after it for the Penguins. He'll send it up ahead now. Here's Isaiah Oxford. A pass ahead looking for Felisakis, but it goes into the corner. Felisakis has it now in a battle with Boisvert. Comes free to Latsunip right in front of the net. And Madden quick to pounce on that one and covers it up. Yeah, Madden covering that one up just to be conservative here or play safe, I should say. Penguins looking a bit more energized here. Circling the puck a bit better than they were before. A little bit less of uh, eye and team hockey that they were playing a little bit earlier on, trying to settle up in front of the net. If you get more bodies in front, that's probably going to disrupt a bit. You have taller players in Yannick Felisakis, for example, to really disrupt play for uh, Madden in front of the net. It was number 20 for the Penguins. Once again, we don't have every player's name, so we just refer to them by their number when we don't have their name on the roster, so we apologize for that. Number 31 for the Red Wings sends it out, and here's number 12 for the Penguins. Number 12 in his own end, bothered by Alex Auger of the Red Wings. Number 12 will start back. Nice moves through a couple of Red Wings, and he's in alone. Number 12 trying to split the D right to the net, and he lost the handle a little bit. A quick whistle, Madden hadn't covered the puck, but we'll get a face off. Yeah, very, really a elusive play here that we got to see by number 12 on the Penguins. Basically splits the D, as you say there, and kept to the center of the, if he had kept to the, maybe the center of the ice, it was just unfortunate. He had so much speed that he ran out of room the closer he got into Devin Madden. That's why the, the defense had a really good job to maybe push him closer and closer to the goal. But in tight like that, you want to make sure that your goaltender has some room to breathe. And also is, uh, you have a very calm goaltender, thankfully, in Devin Madden for the Red Wings. Vogrel sends it across for Felipe Miguel Miron. Miron behind the Penguins net now. Comes back out across, and a shot there by number 25, Alex Auger, is blocked by Noé Vincent of the Penguins. Stone McGregor, he loses it to number 20 of the Penguins. They got numbers here, 20 shoots! Madden made the save, the rebound went into the corner. Baskakov in a battle there with McGregor. McGregor comes out, here's Miro. He sends it ahead. It's a breakaway for Alex Auger. He's got Miro with him. Auger to Miro, back to Auger! And he had a wide open net and just missed. Miro, back to the point for number 31. He'll take a shot. Auger tried the tip, but Shaman grabs that one with the glove. Yeah, the, the, the one thing that became the Achilles heel on that rush was the fact that he Alex Auger had to feel it feed it over to Miron, who was unfortunately a right-handed shot. Because he had to go on the backhand and sort of position his body and completely turn square to his to his assistant, uh, to his uh, his fellow teammate, It was he was unable to really get enough mustard to, on that one. And it, all Shaman had to do was come over and block the net. Final minute, second period here. 3-0 for the Red Wings. As here comes Benjamin Wong for the Penguins. His shot sails over the net and gets it back. And gives it right to Alex Auger of the Red Wings. He'll try a breakout pass, but it goes over the boards. Miron a bit frustrated after that one. Yeah, just like a little chip volley that you usually see in soccer here trying to spring uh, one of his teammates as we actually have the clock still running down. Okay, finally, we'll stop it with 29.7 seconds left. But the Red Wings have looked really strong this period. So have the Penguins. It's just that it got to be a bit more passes. We saw number 20 on the side over here in the, in the former sequence. Comes and it has to, instead of with 
two fellow teammates that he has cross crease in the center ice and the far ice position. He elects to take the tough angle shot. It's a bad decision. Stop doing that if you're the Penguins. I really need to emphasize that. You need to pass the puck more or else you're not going to score. And the Red Wings will start back out three on two. It's Christopher Collin. Leaves it for Zimon Vio. Nice move through his own legs. Zimon Vio in on goal with a shot. And that one sails over the net and into the netting behind Lorenzo Shannon. It's just so impressive watching Alexis Dumont Vio handle the puck because the way that he can just effortlessly move the puck within close and, and tight to the net, he can really go 200 feet hockey and bring it into the offensive zone and, be, and become ever dangerous. He's had the right idea a couple times, just a bit too underneath the puck and he's sailing it way over the goal. Maybe if he can just flick it more and aim under the crossbar, that's probably more ideal for him. Not so much thinking high as much you're thinking more shoulder height. It helps a bit with those higher shots when you're in tight. The Red Wings' speedy forwards are always a threat once they get going on the wing. And here he is again, Zumo Vio with the puck. Seven seconds to go in the period. He'll pass it back for Hart Collymore. The Penguins take it back, though. And a cross-check there and will close out the second period. Three goals for the Red Wings, and they lead it three to nothing after two. Yeah, so if I'm the Penguins, I looking at the time here, it says 137, so roughly 13 minutes of ice time that these two teams are still gonna have going into the third period. But if I'm the Penguins, I just need one. You just need one to get the energy back on your side and maybe figure out, once you beat the goaltender, you figure out the goaltender. That's sort of what the key to this whole thing is. I know it seems very obvious, but that's the, what you're dealing with when you're dealing with a textbook goaltender like Devin Madden. If you can figure out how to fool him, you gotta maybe go back to that. You, you open up all your options that way and become more offensively uh, strong and successful. This is a really good offensive team. I just, again, making that extra pass is really going to benefit them. I look at guys like Nikolai Baskakov, who I think has been fooled so much in this tournament, and he's so eager to score more and more goals. I think he's a smaller player, but he's got a great set of hands. He's somebody I look at, and I think that this is a guy that maybe you put him in front of the net. Yes, he's smaller. He can get moved away a lot, but he can really deflect it home. Unfortunately, deflected home in his own net earlier in the game, but still, if you put him in front of the net with that, with his hand-eye coordination, you're going to have an ideal play here. Plus, with Carreno's speed, number 20 has been really solid for them trying to come into the zone. You have so many options to help you out, so you just can't play, you can't play selfish hockey. I think that's what the Penguins are doing a bit too much. You can make the extra pass, and you make, start making more passes, and open up your options in the offensive zone, you're going to have more success. You know the Penguins can score quickly. They've got such talent on the roster, and if they get going, this game is far from over, but here come the Red Wings again as we open the third period. Here's Christopher Collin, a backhand shot, and that one sails wide. No teammate in the vicinity there, and a nice play by number 20 to chip it out. And now here come the Penguins, perhaps an on-man rush. It's number 20, holds on and shoots! He scores! Number 20 for the Penguins, speeding down the wing. He beats Devin Madden finally, and the Penguins have made this a game. Yeah, see, that's all it takes. And that's not a sharp angle shot. That's a shot that's in tight. It sort of hit off something, I believe, or and just fooled Madden. Or it was just an absolute laser that we got to see. But that's what happens when you put the puck in. There's a bit of a discussion hanging happening from the bench here. I, 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 the Red Wings were sort of protesting. I don't know if Madden was interfered with or what, what transpired. But regardless, the Penguins finally on the scoreboard. That's a big one for them. We'll see if they're big stars can continue from that. As speaking of, here's Felisakis, but he's poke checked there. Antoine Boivin for the Red Wings will send it around for Hart Collymore, and now it's Christopher Collin. He'll send it to the right side for Alexis Zimon Vio in a battle with Lemley. Zimon Vio is able to get the puck, but now it goes to the boards. Lemley will come out with the puck, and there's going to be a penalty called here on the Penguins. It's a hooking call. I believe it is going to go against Hugo at Lemelay, actually, specifically as he went into the corner or the behind the net against Dumont Vio, and the two tried to go at it here. Uh, but just a bigger player because of that he had in tight, and because he, he sort of pushed with the stick too and then pulled back, that's what gets the hooking call. It's not so much that nobody goes for a hooking call, it's like a tripping penalty in the same sense. Usually, some guy's holding your stick. If you let go of your stick, then that's a, usually an indication that's a hold against the other guy. But right there, if you pull it back trying to get it free, that's usually where you get those hooks. Not what the Penguins are looking for here. Down three to one early in this third period. The Red Wings will head to a two-minute power play. Off the tie up there. Penguins won the draw. And it'll come back out for number 12. 12 for the Penguins trying to get away from Vogrell. It's a hound on the forecheck. Vogrell still going at it. And he managed to take the puck back, but it goes right to Felisakis of the Penguins. Felisakis in slowly, passes it across to number 20, the goal scorer. Number 20 turns back. Tries to step around a man and does, but it comes back to Alex Auger for the Red Wings. He'll send it out for Miron. Felipe Miguel Miron in on three Penguins, got through, managed to keep the puck and goes into the corner. Miron around the net now. 
Comes back out in front. He's looking for Stone McGregor. It got tipped and it comes out of the zone. McGregor sends it back in and we got a whistle for offside. Yeah, both referees looking up in the air. They made that mistake. It looked like uh, that was going to be Auger who looked to touch the puck and he actually lifted his stick at the last second. So an early whistle here by the referee. That's a bit of a mistake, but we're going to have to do a face-off draw right outside the neutral zone regardless uh, of that one as we, as we reset here. All smiles though at the end of that one as they sort of brush off that mistake. And right off the draw, here comes Miron back into the Penguin zone. Miron down behind the net. Centers it out front, a shot there from Vogrell. Didn't get good enough wood on that one, and it goes wide. Carreno. Vogrell takes the puck back again. Vincent will send it back for number 12. 12 looking for space. And he'll send it out to center. McGregor is there. Across for number 31. He'll come into the Penguin zone. 31 around Oxford. And around number 12 as well. Into the corner now. Chips it up along the boards. Gets it back himself at the right point. He'll walk into the middle. A pass across for Miron. Now for Vogrell. Couldn't handle it. He'll send it back down for Miron. Vogrell fell down. Miron looking for an option. He'll skate within a bit himself around Carreno. And he comes around the net now. It's poke check behind the net. Miron in the high slot. Still walking with it. Passes it off now to Auger. Auger across. A one touch pass by Vogrell, but nobody was there to receive it. And now Isaiah Oxford trying to start out for the Penguins. And you can tell he's a bit tired. He steals the puck back, though. Vogrell, backhand pass. It's intercepted by Vincent, who has a bit of space to skate here as the penalty's over. Vincent takes the shot. And a good stick check there by number 31 to send that one wide. And now right in front, Carreno trying to cut to the net. Miron for the Red Wings will send it out. Vogrell is just out of his reach. Here comes number 12 for the Penguins. Ahead for Baskakov through neutral ice. Baskakov in on the right wing, trying to cut to the middle and does. Baskakov is trying to cut to the net. Madden fell down. Baskakov again, right out in the slot, the shot. That stopped, rebound. Wong whacking away at it, but Madden is there again to make the save. Yeah, Devin Madden did fall to the ice there and sort of was out of position, but he put himself right in the back, right position to hug the post because there wasn't much space that both uh, Baskakov and Wong could do there in tight with a sharp angle. So maybe just hugging the post as best as you can, even putting your head on it if you need to. Look like you're taking a, an awkward nap on public transit is sort of the look it goes for. I know it's a bit awkward, but you need to hug it as much as possible because pucks do go in on those sharp angle shots at times. Penguins win the draw. Back to number 12, but he lost the handle. And now here's Christopher Collin. He's got Hart Collymore with him. Collin tries to pass it across. And number 12 was there to close that one off. Hart Collymore now. Back down for Collin. Collin trying to dangle in a phone booth. It comes to Hart Collymore. He sends it out in front. Collin turns and fires, but he's slightly fanned on that one. And Hugo Limelay for the Penguins will bring it back. It's number 20 in on the right side. Stops up. Takes the shot. That goes off a of body and wide. Number 20, the pass out in front, and Madden had to be alert on that one, and he'll cover up. Again, some really good goaltending, sound goaltending here by Devin Madden. I know it looks really simple what he's doing, but it's the little nuances, like I said before, the textbook fundamentals that keeps your game, your team in it. Roughly six minutes that we see left to play here in the Penguins, definitely putting a lot of pressure on the Red Wings as they've come alive even more in this third period after that first goal. Only down two, you'd have to imagine if you get close to one, if we trickle down within the five minutes, I'm not sure if they pull the goalie anytime soon. It's gonna be interesting to see what the strategy becomes. The Red Wings win that draw. But it's Carreno who knocks it down, trying to keep it in the zone. And tripped up there was Antoine Boisvert. No call from the official. Carreno the shot. Stopped by Madden. Felisakis picks up the rebound. Gives it back for Carreno. Back to the point now for Sean Wang, who sends it back to Carreno. Carreno has got some space. Shoots! And Madden, the fierce blocker, knocks that one away. Yeah, the fierce blocker, as you pointed out there by Devin Madden, just steering it away so effortlessly. I think if I'm the Red Wings, I need to try and break this out. Yes, you're not getting a lot of calls your way. There's a couple times you're getting tripped up. But what you need to do is establish a breakout. If it's going to come to just getting your guys a bit more of a uh, space to do something or at least just get a line change here, then maybe that's ideal for you. But you got to win the draws first. They win the draw, but the puck comes back to Sean Wang at the point. Wang sends it deep. And that's Edouard Morin fighting for it for the Penguins. It comes back out to Deem Hart Collymore. Couldn't get a handle on that one. And Lim Lin will take it back. Across for Wang. Out for Morin. Felisakis will work his way in. Yannick Felisakis shoots. That one goes just wide to the net of Devin Madden. Felisakis has it back. Few Red Wings in his way, but he got it back to Lim Lin at the point. Lim Lin takes the shot. Madden 
stands tall once again. Yeah, Madden just tracking the puck so well. His vision is just so good. I, I, I can't emphasize this enough. I feel like I'm, I feel like I'm really, I'm really a, a homer here, if you will, to quote the Boston crowds for the Red Wings. But, but truly, Devin Madden is putting on a show. He's keeping his team really in this by making these effortless plays. Uh, on the other side, Shaman, we haven't seen him uh, tested too much in this period, but I guess that's that he doesn't mind it too much when it comes to the fact that you need to kill as much clock as possible when you're in the lead. Penguins have turned on the pressure in this third period, but have only managed the one goal. Here's Auger for the Red Wings. Auger on the left side. And cut back against Oxford, and he sends it down now for Miron. Miron, a centering pass for Vaugrel. Didn't have an angle to shoot, so he turns back. Vaugrel in the high slot will send it to the boards. Nice silence there. He'll clear it up ahead for number 20. Possible three on two here for the Penguins. He centers it. That was just ahead of Baskakov. And number 31 will take it back. And now, here's Miro for the Red Wings. Miro, he'll stop at the right face. I've got Vogrel. It's the second time he's fanned on a shot in the slot off a great pass. It's unfortunate. And now here comes number 20 for the Penguins. 20 into the Red Wings zone. That's back and holds on to the puck. He's right on net now. Almost bumped into Madden. But Oxford sends it back for number 20. Puck in the skate there. And number 31, a shot from number 12 that went off a couple bodies and went wide. And Alex Auger will start out for the Red Wings. His pass intercepted by Oxford, he gives it back to Leblay. Or excuse me, that's Noé Vincent. He sends it up for number 12. Number 12 into the zone, the shot. That one goes high of the net of Devin Madden. And Vincent will take it back at his own blue line. He sends it up ahead, looking for Baskakov, but it goes right to number 31 of the Red Wings. Ahead for Auger now. Auger on the left side, trying to cut in on Vincent. Now he cuts back, looking for a teammate. They're on a line change right now, so his defensemen weren't available. But now here's Christopher Collin with some space around, trying to wrap around again. But Lorenzo Shaman says no to that. Yeah, Lorenzo Shaman, now he's coming. He's getting some action in tight now Now after a period of time where, you know, they, they had the offensive onslaught there in the second period for the Red Wings, and they broke out immensely. And now Shaman is just really playing sound and tracking the puck going post to post incredibly well and just trying to freeze it whenever he can, playing a bit more conservative that way. Red Wings win the draw. But the Penguins are setting out. Here's Felisakis trying to get around Boisvert, and he does. But he's stuck to the outside now. Felisakis goes into the boards but keeps the puck. Comes out in front now, takes the shot, and Madden says no. Yeah, Yannick Felisakis takes a shot along the boards behind the net and then just comes right out in front. That's what he. That's what's really good with him. Not only does he have in, a really good speed, but he's a strong hockey player. Not just when he skates. We talk about strong skating. It's about. It's not. It's how you utilize your stride and how you can shake defenders off you at the same time. Felisakis takes another shot. And as if once wasn't enough, Madden stops him again. Yeah, just showing off the the glove here again does Devin Madden. A couple ones for the highlight reel. I know it's really textbook as we've been saying, but the glove is sharp. And a shot there, Madden once again, for about the third time in the past 10 seconds of play, will stop it and cover up. I think my rec the recommendation that Liverman is indicating to Colin is lift the stick. Yep, there you go. Lift the stick and get the draw in your favor. And it's one back to Boisvert. But his pass hits the stick of Wong. Wong takes it back now. He'll send it in front. Felisak is back to Wong. Wasn't expecting the pass as he couldn't finish that one. And now here's Dumont Vio who sends it across for Hart Collymore. Hart Collymore looking back for Dumont Vio. That's picked off by the Penguins. And here comes Ben Carreno with speed. Carreno into the Red Wing zone. Takes a weak shot. And Madden steers that one to the corner. Here's Christopher Collin. Contact there as he falls down, and here's Hugo Lemelet. Lemelet will take the shot, Madden the save. Lemelet will get it back again. Sends it to the point for Benjamin Wong. Wong steps around Zumo Vio, fires! Madden the save, and it goes behind the net. Boisvert couldn't clear it, and Sean Wang picks it up for the Penguins. A minute and a half to go in this game, they're down two. Net is empty, the pass across. Nobody there for the Penguins as they're playing six on five right now. Benjamin Wong across for Lemelet. Lemelet walks in, shoots! Madden makes the save, saves the rebound as well. Scrum in front of the net, but it comes loose to number 20 for the Penguins. His pass for Sean Wang. Wang sends it down. In front, number 20, the shot! Madden makes the pad save once again. Number 20 looking for an option. He'll send it down for Benjamin Wong. Wong across for Carreno. Couldn't handle that. Carreno shoots, and Madden will stop play with the glove. 
Yeah, Devin Madden is really keeping his team in it as we're going to see the clock tick down a bit more here where it says 150 in the game. So I'm not sure if we're going to have many sequences left, maybe just one or two if we're fortunate enough because this has been really good offensive hockey that we've been seeing all game, but also some really fun goaltending that we get to see, especially from Devin Madden, not to take away from Lorenzo Shaman, who's now on the bench. Six on five hockey is very, very fun, fun to watch. Final 30 seconds here. Three to one Red Wings is the score. The pass in front. Taken away by Baskakov. He shoots. Madden made the save and stuck with him. And now it's cleared down the ice. It'll go wide of the empty net. And it's going to be an icing call against the Red Wings. 14 seconds to go, but we're going to have a running clock here, so it's unlikely we'll get another faceoff. As we're in the final six seconds now, it looks like the Red Wings are going to cruise to a 3-1 to one victory. Off the back of a fantastic goaltending performance from Devin Madden. Yeah, Devin Madden, I'm, I'm, I, I would love to give him the, actually his props and say he's the star of the game. As much as there were three goals that were put up on the boards by the Red Wing, it was all Madden early on in late stages of this game. It was just a textbook game. I can't say that enough. I'm going to keep saying it. Play a drinking game at home. Every time I say textbook, take a, take a shot. You're going to be wasted because Devin Madden is phenomenal. Fantastic game from him. Unfortunately, he had his shutout spoiled in the third period. But that's going to do it for us here. 3-1 the final for the Red Wings. On behalf of Connor Tomalty, I'm Jared Lachman-Minkoff. Thanks for sticking with us, and we'll see you next time.